So what I will do, we'll learn or we'll or teach holographic breathing, this movement. We take it through the whole body. This movement of the jaw and mouth spreads through the whole face, through the brain, through the body, through every cell. This wave-like motion starts happening. And the mouth is more relating to the face and brain and downwards. But also what you can get as a more physical breath, which we're going to use tonight, is uh, a movement in the feet. And I'll, I'll talk you into this in the meditation. And quite crumpled toes. Maybe that's the wrong way up. That's a bit better. Anyway, so on, on the... Well, it's more domed on the out, but it's like the diaphragm. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in, breathing out. And um, when I'm, and that does relate directly to the diaphragms, and it connects to this movement of the mouth. And it's the same thing in the hands. Breathing in, breathing out. Breathing in breathing out. You don't have to do it strong or hard or all of the time, but it helps to get a stronger, more physical breath through the body and through the spine, which we're going to be working with today, the spine and the psoas muscles. So I'll teach the holographic breathing and we'll go into this movement of the foot. We'll first start flapping it, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. But the foot is staying the same when you do that. So the muscles are pulling up the front of the leg to pull it up and then it's just relaxing for it to drop. Then we're also going to connect to the back of the leg and the heel so they both lift, so the foot stays level, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. So we'll be working with that, that connects into the diaphragm, into a whole body breathing. It just interfaces with the movement of the holographic breathing that starts with this movement of the mouth. And um, I'm getting quite a lot of anatomy. We're going to be working with two circuits. And don't worry, you don't have to take in everything I say. I'm just kind of going over what we're going to do in the meditation. Obviously, I'll be saying it in the meditation, so you don't have to remember this, you don't have to know any of the names. We will go over it and there's a recording so you can listen to the recordings again. And we're going to be working with two circuits. Um, we're going to be working with the deep earth energies, which is more the back of the body, and this is more in the heels, it's the sit bones, it's the lower shoulder blades, the back of the lower back of the head, lower back of the face. Um, and that will connect into the back of the body and the back of the lower back, which we're going to be working with. Then the other circuit is the fire energy circuit. And from the heel, you come forwards to just under the leg and it's this area in the foot just under the ankles and in the leg the points for the fire circuit or some of them are the ankles. Now, where's it gone? This is going to lead into some new points which I've looked at for a while. We worked with the psoas muscle in uh, one of the previous fire energy webinars and the psoas muscle relates to the uh, the fire circuits but also I, I discovered something 
uh, working with it um, today that the point where it connects, that the psoas muscle connects from the inside of the, the bone here in the thigh, it comes up over here and it comes up the inside face on each side of the spine here. But also where it's connecting in this top inside face of the, I don't know the name of the bone, it's either a tibia or fibia, but the thigh bone muscle, thigh bone. <laughs> that point there is en the energy point for the, the fire circuit for the top of the leg. So you've got the inside ankle relating to this inside nodule in the top of the thigh. They relate to each other and relate directly into the psoas muscle. And on the, the organs of the fire energies are the ovaries and testes, the uterus and prostate, the hara, the small intestines and the heart. And the organs that are relating to the inside of the inside ankle, the inside upper, upper thigh here, and also relating to thigh bone. There's a couple of organs, but the main one we're going to be working with is the ovaries and testes. We don't have time to go through all of the organs, but we're going to be working with the fire energies through the leg, through the psoas muscle, and into the lower back. And we're going to be connecting that to the ovaries and testes to heal that whole area. And interestingly, where it comes over here, I think the ovaries around, around here somewhere, or one of them, both sides, and the, it's, I think they're kind of resting or very close to the psoas muscle. The men, obviously, they're hanging down here somewhere, but um, that's also close to the inside of the thigh where these points are here. Now, I'm not going to tell you all of the points, you know, you really have to come, because in the advanced webinars we got much longer, I don't have to teach people holographic breathing and get all that going, so we've got plenty of time to work through all of the organs, all of the points in a, in, in, in a relaxed and comfortable way, but I can add a bit of the, to this, I can give you an oversight, I can give you a feel of the different energies and how you can heal the body and how you can heal your organs. Now, in the face, the fire energies are the chin, the middle of the upper jaw, then it's the inside of the nasal passageways, the inside of the eyes at the top, and the, the roof of the mouth and the floor of the nasal passageway. So it's central through the face, this fire energy, which we'll be working with a bit. We'll be connecting it to it a bit. And then in the cranium, see it's the lower, see the fire phoenix there? That's the fire energies for the cranium. And we'll also be working with this, the lower fire energies, the heart here. But these wings of the, the other points we're going to work with, which um, are the, the wings of the fire phoenix there, which you've got inside the thigh here, you've got a point where the psoas muscle's connecting. The outside top of that bone as well is the fire circuit, the top of the shoulders, and into the temples, into the fire circuit here. So you get this relationship down the outside, which is one set of organs. Then you've got this relationship through the inside and psoas muscle, which is another set of organs. And one of those organs is the 
ovaries and testes. So we're just going to be working with that and getting the feel of the fire circuit and comparing it to the dark, deep earth energies, which is the back of the jaw, the green bit here, the back of the jaw, and the back of the cranium, the lower back of the cranium, the lower shoulder blades, the sit bones. And those organs are more like the, pan the big, heavy, dark organs. They're the pancreas, strong organs, liver, duodenum and gallbladder, but we're not going to go into those organs. We'll just feel the dark energy. Then we'll move into the fire energies. We'll start getting this movement through the spine first with the breathing motion from the hands and feet. We can get a good motion in the spine and through the whole body. Then we'll relax that and we'll go more energy. We'll, we'll go onto a more subtle energy realm and we'll work with the organs, their connection to the spine, and we'll work with this fire energy circuit. So it's quite a lot entailed. Holographic breathing is not like any other, or not like any other breathing system I know of. It opens up this whole healing modality, different qualities of energy, different organs, the kundalini, how different organs relate to different vertebrae, different qualities, different channels. And this is fed, this is inspired and fed by divine intervention or divine energies come in while I'm teaching this, which really is very helpful and I can understand it in a whole new way way I would be up, I can't say it, bad word without a paddle. <laughs> if, if, if I wasn't getting that, that help, but there is, it feels kind of Tibetan or something, or maybe not even that, maybe not even worldly, but it is this divine knowledge of how our organs work, how they relate to the spine, how that clears the bardo of karma from past lives and all lives. There's a whole medicine here that opens up on all levels. There's a depth to holographic breathing that even I can't comprehend. While these energies are coming through, you know, it's very clear that there's this mass of knowledge and understanding that goes beyond where we're at on earth and the human race and you know it is integrating with our evolution into a new race into a new humankind that's how I see it anyway, as a, a way of evolving, a way of spiritually advancing or transcending. There's a, a depth to it. Um, <clears throat> anyway, I will describe holographic breathing again and then in the meditation, learn holographic breathing, get the hands and feet going, get the whole body. Now, what happens, what you don't normally perceive in the breath is that the muscles are working to open the chest. The diaphragm is a muscle. Diaphragm is working. And for a muscle to work, it gets shorter all of the muscles or nearly all of the muscles through the whole body are contracting on the in-breath and then relaxing on the out-breath. And what that does is in our whole body there's an expansion to the side but we shrink. There's a, a tension top to bottom. So breathing in there is this expansion but there's also contraction top to bottom and on the out breath 
there is this contracting sideways but lengthening and relaxing on the out breath. And what that means, this is a bit ill this spine at the minute, it's lost a, a top disc. <laughs> so, um, breathing in shortens or there's a tension through all of the vertebrae. It pulls the spine straight, all the muscles pull the spine straight. There's also this tension which is pulling them slightly together, which is opposed to how most people see the breath. And the psoas muscle pulling into the lower spine as it tightens on the in-breath, the psoas muscle is tightening, it's stressing. And on the out-breath, it's relaxing. So as it's tightening, it's pulling these vertebrae down to the pelvis and down to the legs. So the lumbar vertebrae, as that happens, they're shortening, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. Now, people find it hard to feel that and it moves into a new way of experiencing things when people do feel that. But, and you may not feel that, but you may feel it as a tightening through the muscles on the in-breath and then a relaxing of the muscles on the out-breath. And with the legs and with the arms to pull the foot up from the back and the front, all of the muscles are tightening, breathing in through the back of the leg, the front of the leg, the sides of the legs. They're tightening to make this flattening of the foot. Then they're relaxing. The same with the arms and hands. They're tightening, extending, flattening, relaxing and cupping. And that extends through the spine. All of the muscles, the length of the spine, they're tensing on the in-breath to open the abdomen, to lift the ribs, to work through the neck. There's this tightening of the muscles on the in-breath and relaxing on the out-breath. So that is what we're going to be working with and that is how the psoas muscle interacts with the breathing motion of the spine. And people will often think, oh, it's the other way around. It's, it's going to lengthen because everything gets bigger on the in-breath. Everything doesn't get bigger on the in-breath. Everything stays the same size. Some air comes into the lungs and the ribs can expand anywhere that's got an interface. Well, the lungs, sinuses, ears are the only place with an interface. Yeah, air can come in and the ribs can expand. The diaphragm can drop because it will pull air in. and that, that. But the abdomen can't change volume. The brain can't change volume. The arms and legs can't change volume. So for something to expand sideways, for the abdomen to expand out to the sides, shrinking, diaphragm is coming down, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, it's how the abdomen is moving, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. And then from the sides, it looks like expanding, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, but that sideways expansion is coming from this pressure top to bottom. And that is the same with the spine, breathing in, breathing out, breathing in, breathing out. Now, that takes a bit of time to get used to, but you may feel the tensioning, but don't stress yourself. You know, I know this is a difficult thing for people to experience. I just lost loads of students <laughs> by telling them that their spine shrinks on the in-breath. So if you want to have it getting longer on the in-breath, that's fine. I'm losing my voice. I hope I've still got a voice at the end of this. You know, I'll get halfway through the meditation and it'll go quiet. And there will just be this croaking noise <laughs> as my voice disappears. All right. So holographic breathing, the lips are relaxed and closed. The tongue is relaxed and on the roof of the mouth. The tip of the tongue is close to or touching the front teeth. The breath is through the nose all of the time. The lips are closed all of the time. The tongue is on the roof of the mouth all the time. Within that, while the lips are still closed, while the tongue is on the roof of the mouth, the 
Jaw gently opens, breathing in, gently closes, breathing out. And it's a small motion, about half a finger width, few millimeters, quarter of an inch. It's not a big motion. It starts as an exercise, and then after a while it just integrates into the movement of the breath. I'm going to I'm going to move this forwards. I look quite a long way away. Let's move that a bit forwards. Okay, just turn it a bit. Turn that a bit, maybe. There we go. So <clears throat> I'm going to demonstrate it. You probably won't even see the movement of the mouth, but you'll see that my lips aren't closing. You'll see that it's very subtle. You'll see that it is very meditative. And uh, once that starts, I, I just don't want to come back. This feels lovely. This really gets amplified in dry fasting, by the way, like the breath and the holographic breathing takes on a whole new thing in dry fasting for some reason. It just, they just work together beautifully. Saying all of that, if you're going to do dry fasting, don't just listen to me. <laughs> really don't. Do some proper research, you know, do it in a good way. Might be good to do water fasting first and get your diet well and detox, whatever. But um, it is an incredible healing thing. That's all I can really say about it. Um, right, so the nose particular breathing, you're not breathing fast, slow, shallow or deep, just relaxed breathing with this movement. It is not connective breath, there's space between the breath. If you are new, it's best to learn it the first bit sitting up because if you're lying down, there's a good chance my voice sends people to sleep, holographic breathing sends people to sleep, the channels send people to sleep. <laughs> Most people spend a lot of their time asleep in these sessions. But you want to be awake to actually get the instructions so that you do learn the holographic breathing. Once it's going, it's like riding a bike. You'll be doing it, but before it's going, good to be sitting up so you do get to learn it. After that point, it's probably best to lie down to do the movement of the hands and feet. So, you see this little nodule there, here, where my thumb is touching, kind of comes from that, comes, oh, you've got the pubic arch here, comes over the side of the pubic arch, through the pelvis, through the side of the pelvis up here, then up the inside face on, of the spine on both sides, so it's the muscles inside, the fire energy of the muscles inside the bottom part of the spine, the deep earth energies of the muscles on the outside of the spine at the back. Uh, it doesn't matter if you get it wrong. <laughs> All right, we are going to start, make yourselves comfortable. If you know holographic breathing, relaxing into holographic breathing. And if you don't know holographic breathing, just do relaxed breath. And we'll bring in some energies to start off with. So gently breathing, 
send a smile, send some energy to the earth and allow the earth to say hello back. Allow yourself to receive from the earth and notice what that feels like through your body and through your energies. And then sending a smile, sending some energy to the higher self and the beneficial energies, the beneficial energies, any channels that you work with, spiritual teachers, spiritual energies, divine energies, anything that's beneficial. And sending a smile, sending some energy and allow the higher self and the beneficial energies to say hello back. Allowing yourself to receive from the higher self and the beneficial energies. And notice what that feels like through your body and through your energies. Asking the earth, the higher self, beneficial energies to be with you through the whole webinar as your guide and resource. And just start off with, bring your tongue to the roof of the mouth, the upper surface of the tongue on the roof of the mouth, the tip of the tongue close to or touching the front teeth, The lips are closed and relaxed and just start moving the jaw up and down, small up and down motions with the jaw. Don't have to connect it to the breath yet. Just letting the jaw rise and fall. Just notice you can move the jaw and keep the lips closed. It's a bit like chewing. And slowing that motion down. And then when you feel ready, as the jaw is opening, allowing the breath to come in through the nose. And as the jaw is closing, allowing the breath to come out through the nose. Notice it feels a bit like a bellows. The jaw opens, it draws the breath in through the nose. The jaw closes, lets the breath release out through the nose. Notice it gives you a deeper breath. The jaw is relaxing open, the breath comes in through the nose, the jaw relaxing closed, the breath comes out through the nose, the lips stay closed all of the time. The tongue stays on the roof of the mouth all of the time. Notice it feels like a little bellows as the jaw is opening, the breath is coming in through the nose. As the jaw is closing, the breath leaves through the nose. Now we're going to change the gestalt and the emphasis rather than having the awareness on the jaw having the awareness of the breath coming in through the nose. As you're breathing in through the nose, the jaw 
relaxes open. As you're breathing out through the nose, the jaw relaxes closed. Breathing in, automatically the jaw relaxes open. Breathing out through the nose, the jaw relaxes closed. The lips stay closed all of the time. The tongue stays on the roof of the mouth all of the time. You may start feeling energies moving through your body. You may feel channels. You may feel energies moving through your brain. You may feel your spine lighting up. You may feel all sorts of different things with this very simple movement. Allowing your awareness to come into your chest. As you breathe in, chest is opening, the jaw opens with it. Breathing out, the chest closes and the jaw follows. Breathing in, the diaphragm is dropping, the jaw is dropping. Breathing out, the diaphragm is rising, the jaw is rising. They're connected together. As you move the diaphragm, it moves the jaw. On the in-breath, the abdomen opens, the jaw follows. Breathing out, the abdomen closes, the jaw follows. It's all integrating and connecting together. All you have to do is let it. The lips stay closed all of the time, the tongue stays on the roof of the mouth all of the time. Feeling the whole body breathing, opening on the in-breath, closing on the out-breath. Notice how your face, your cranium, neck, brain have started to breathe in a subtle way. A new thing is happening. Your face, cranium and and brain have started to breathe. Your neck started to breathe. Every cell connects to this subtle motion of the breath. Every cell opens and closes with the breath, allowing that reality to travel through you, that every cell is being breathed, every cell is being nourished. and let it, just let it happen. Mm. Okay, so we're going to make this a bit more physical now. You need to be able to have your legs stretched out. If you have learned holographic breathing, it's just happily going, it's fine to lie down. Gently breathing with the holographic breathing. As you breathe in, the feet are flapping up. As you breathe out, the feet are flapping down. Notice how this connects to the breath through the front of your body. As you breathe in, the feet are flapping up. 
you breathe out, the feet are flapping down. Notice how this connects to the breath through the front of your body, it connects to the jaw. The jaw and the feet are pulling towards each other on the in-breath. The feet and the jaw relaxing away from each other on the out-breath. And then also coming to the heel at the back, so the foot isn't being flapped up, it's being pulled up at the front, but also being pulled up at the back, so the calves and the back of the legs are pulling the heels up, the front of the legs are pulling the toes up, the foot stays flat, it just flattens out on the in-breath and the legs tighten. Breathing out, the legs relax and the foot cups. So the muscles are tightening on the in-breath. The muscles are relaxing on the out-breath through the whole legs and this is opening the feet on the in-breath. Relaxing the feet on the out-breath. Same is happening with the hands, the arms are slightly tensing and the hands are flattening. It's good to have your arms straight out. Breathing out, the arms are relaxing and the hands are cupping. It happens right through the whole legs up to the hips, it happens right through the whole arms up to the shoulders. And through the shoulders, through the hips, into the spine and into the back. Notice how the heels relate right up through your whole back. You may feel this tensioning along the length of the spine as you breathe in with the arms and legs. And relaxing of the spine on the out breath with the arms and the legs. So notice how it's not just the arms and legs, it interfaces through your whole body. The ribs lift, the diaphragm drops, the abdomen expands. So it's a, it's, it's a, I've forgotten what the word is, but it's shortening which is causing everything to expand or tightening which is causing everything to expand, relaxing which is causing everything to contract, or the abdomen and lungs anyway. So just doing that very gently and we're going to bring in the deep earth energies. You don't have to keep that going all the time, you can stop and start the jaw needs to keep moving. You need to keep doing the holographic breathing but you can drop in and out of the movement of the hands and feet and it's the feet that are the important one with what we're working with today. Becoming aware of the back of the jaw, the back of the cranium, lower back of the cranium, lower shoulder blades, the back of the pelvis, the sit bones, the heels of the feet and the heels of the hands. Notice how this brings you into a deeper, richer, maybe darker earth, strong earth energy. The heels, the hands and feet, the sit bones, the back of the head, the back of the jaw moves you into the back of the body and this movement of the muscles through the back of the legs, through the back of the arms, through the back of the torso. Deep, rich, energy. This relates to the deep organs, the liver, pancreas, duodenum, gallbladder, very strong deep organs, deep earth magical energy. 
also connecting to the divine energies. Notice the comfort and housing and grounding and healing of that deep earth energy. Allow that to go through your brain and connect up to the higher self. It's reflected in the higher realms. Deep grounding energy. Now if you come forwards from the heel an inch or so, so you're directly under the leg. Notice how the energy changes, it gets a bit warmer. And then up also the ankles. In the hands you move forwards from the heel of the hand and you move up into the wrists. You may start feeling your heart, it may connect you to your heart. you feel the inside ankles and feel how they connect to the base, this nodule in the top of the femur where the psoas muscles connect to. So the ankles connecting to the top inside face of the femur. The outside ankles connecting to the outside of the hips. In the arms, it's the top of the shoulders. These all connect to the temples and the wings of the fire phoenix. Notice this fiery red energy in the face, the chin, the roof of the mouth and the nasal passageways. In the cranium, the fire Phoenix, the front lower cranium. This is the top and back of the nasal passageways. You may feel your heart more, you may feel your pubic arch more, you may feel a fiery energy. And on the in-breath, as the feet are flattening, it's connecting to this nodule and the base of the psoas muscles and up to the sides of the pubic arch, through inside the pelvis, up the insides of the spine, going up four or five vertebrae up the spine. On the in-breath, this is all shortening. The spine is shortening. In the out-breath, this is all lengthening. And the spine is relaxing or lengthening. It may not be shortening, lengthening, but it's putting a tension in it, pulling the vertebrae together. Feeling this tension of the in-breath from the inside of the femur up through the psoas muscle and to the inside sides of the lower back. Notice how these points and how the psoas muscles relate to your ovaries and your testes. Notice this warm energy, that the ovaries and testes are part of this fiery, warm energy. And how your ovaries and testes are relating to the psoas muscle, muscle and relating to the lower spine, that they can heal each other. Notice when you bring in the organs, it brings in a different energy. This opens the vagus nerve, 
connects to all of the other organs and connects you to the brain and the higher self, the ovaries and testes and all of the organs have an almost instantaneous connection through the brain to the higher self and subtle realms. They also connect to the spine and through the kundalini in the spine to the brain and then to the higher self. So there's two forms of kundalini, one up the front of the body or through the body, the other through the spine. A very gentle motion, the hands and feet, the inside ankles connecting you to the inside nodule on the femur, the base of the psoas muscle and then through the whole psoas muscle. Notice how the psoas muscle become warm and red. Tightening on the in-breath, relaxing on the out-breath and through the whole spine, tightening on the in-breath, or the lower spine, tightening on the in-breath, relaxing on the out-breath. And let that release. There's different muscles working through the whole spine. They all work together your whole spine is breathing in, breathing out. The energies are releasing through your spine, through your brain, into the beyond. There's a spiritual and kundalini aspect to holographic breathing. Allow that wisdom. Allow that connection to the divine energies, the divine teachers, the higher realms. Allow yourself to be healed and energetically informed. Allow your psoas muscles to breathe, feeling those inside nodules in the femur, how that connects to the ovaries and testes. It also connects to the uterus and prostate. Can all be healed and they in turn relate to the spine. Allow them to ground an earth into that energy of the spine. And so as muscles are very much the inside muscles, inside the body, connecting to the inside of the spine. And dropping back from the more central part of the foot to the heel, Notice the energy changing, moving into the heels of the hands, moving into the sit bones, the back of the sacrum, the lower shoulder blades, the back of the head, the back of the jaw. Notice you've moved out of that fiery energy. You've got deep, strong, dark earth energy and that fire warms the earth and the earth gives the fire ground, gives the fire sanctuary. They feed off of each other, they balance each other. Feeling that deep rich energy at the back of your body, very much to do with the pancreas and liver. And that, that, even though it's a deep earth energy, very strong connection through the brain and up into the higher self. There's the deep earth energies of the higher self. It 
connects to its mirror in the divine energies. Feeling that deep, rich energy. And then coming forwards in the feet, forwards in the hands, into the ankles, into the wrists. Feel the energy warming up. Notice how it connects to the heart. Forwards in the cranium, from the back of the cranium to the front of the cranium, into the fast phoenix. From the back of the jaw into the front of the jaw, the roof of the mouth and the nasal passageways. Notice your heart starts becoming warm. Also into the pubic arch, and you start becoming aware of the ovaries, testes, uterus, prostate and this fire energy. And connecting from the inside of the ankles to the inside of the femur, top of the femur, the psoas muscle, the fire energies muscle moving through the pelvis, right up warming the whole lower spine with that fire energy. And allowing your ovaries, your testes to connect to the energies of the spine. Let them heal. Let them communicate with the spine, the kundalini and God. Notice how that rises up through the spine into the fire phoenix in the cranium and up into the divine realms. From the earth, connects to the earth, connects to the divine realms, the fire energy circuit and we're healing the ovaries and testes. Letting them connect to the spine. Deep wisdom, deep creation. All things are born out of the ovaries and testes. Deep channel into the divine energies. You may feel a channel coming down the ovaries, testes connect to the divine realms and the uterus and prostate. You may feel a channel, divine energy coming down into your uterus, into your prostate. Healing those organs. Healing the karma in those organs. Gently breathing with the holographic breathing. Gently moving the hands and feet. Letting your organs heal. When you connect it to the spine, it gives it a ground, but it also runs up through the kundalini, different energies of the spine, through the brain, to the higher self. Deep, deep healing. 
And then from the moving back in the feet to the heels, moving back to the heels of the hands, the sit bones, back of the pelvis, shoulder blades, back of the sh lower shoulder blades, back of the head, back of the jaw, and you move into the deep, rich earth energies. Relax your neck. Allow yourself to relax into that energy. Notice how that energy gives the ovaries and testes an earth. And just gently breathing, let the energies go through everywhere, let the whole hands and feet breathe from the back of the hands and feet up into the fingers, through the whole face, through the whole cranium, through the whole spine, through the whole body. all the different energies, definitely into the fingers and toes and the front of the feet and hands, and through the whole body. Relaxing the back of the neck, relaxing the back of the head. Okay, we're going to come back in about a minute. And sending a thank you to the earth. Sending a thank you to the higher self and beneficial energies. And letting the energies go off for love and healing to the earth. Love and healing to the higher self and beneficial energies. Allowing yourself to be loved and healed and allowing the energies to go out to all sentient beings for love and healing. And you are a sentient being allowing yourself to be loved and healed. And when you feel ready, gently allowing yourself to come back. So wave your hands if you enjoyed that. Okay, great. Everyone enjoyed it. Marvellous. So I think next Sunday it's Easter, Easter Sunday. So I'm going to run a, another webinar then. We'll be doing a similar thing, but the focus will be more, we'll be working with the fire energies and the deep earth energies again, but the focus will be more on the deep earth energies. And I will include one of the organs, probably the pancreas, or liver and we'll be more learning how the neck, how the vertebrae in the neck breathe. Um, then after that we've got the next, we've been doing a six seminar um, series working with the different vertebrae and areas of the spine 
and the interface between the face and cranium. This is a very powerful series. Um, and we go into this whole thing in far more depth where we work with all of the organs, all of the vertebrae, all of the energy points. And we've done the first two, which are the organs of the deep earth and the organs of the fire. Um, but people can still join that because there's recordings of those first two and you can get the links to the remaining four. So, oh, that isn't after that. Well, so I'm going to start a new series. The new series will start after Easter and we will be working with the energies of the spine. But for four, it'll be the four or five webinars we're just going to work with the deep earth energies and those organs. It would be a very powerful webinar series. So that will start the week after Easter. You can join that if you wish. And there's the one where we're working with the spine, face and cranium. These are advanced webinars, but anybody who's learned holographic breathing can come to them. There's kind of a family of people who appreciate holographic breathing and find it deeply beneficial for their lives. And a very easy group to join if you want to come and join those and really go into depth with this work, really, because we've got time to properly let the energies percolate, to work with all of the organs, to work with the whole spine. And we we move in much more depth in those webinars. And there, there you can look on my website, that's on the uh, webinar page, advanced webinar page on my website. You can join the one that's already going. I highly recommend that. The first two webinars we did on that, I think, have been the most powerful webinars we've ever done. They were mind-blowing. So just getting those records, it's worth joining just to get the recordings of those two webinars. So that is all there. If you want to take it deeper, it's there. It is not expensive. It really is not. For what holographic breathing is, is it's very inexpensive for that. So that is there. Get it while it's in its infancy. <laughs> You never know where this is going to go. Get it while it's young. Um, you can practice what you've learned. The, the recordings, I'll be making the recordings tomorrow. Um, and they will probably go out on Tuesday. So you can practice this. The last free webinar, really potent as well. Um, and on my website, if you go to my website, the last page, it's got all of the free webinars for about two years there. Um, and they're all fantastic. They're all potent. They're all free of charge. You can do all the meditations. It's a wonderful resource. I give a lot away, but I also like it when people contribute back and come and get involved with the deeper work that we do. All right, that is about it for tonight. I, uh, if you are new, if you've never done holographic breathing, wave your hand if you manage to learn the movement, the moving, yeah, one, yeah, let me go on it, yeah, all the people on this page and Raise your hands if you're new to holographic breathing and you didn't learn how to do it. Everyone, I think everybody learned. Uh, maybe there's people who are too embarrassed to say they didn't learn it. <laughs> I wouldn't have my hand up if I was new and hadn't learned it. Um, you can send me emails. You can... Um, you know, I'll send out a newsletter. When I send out the uh, recordings, you'll get a little newsletter. I'll put links to those places on my website so you can go to the free recordings. You can go to the advanced 
webinars you can join in to whatever level you like all i can say i'm a long time in this profession i mean i was in Pune in the 70s working in an ashram there i've been in the healing world for a long time i'm 65 now and you never know how long i'm going to be around for or how fast this is going to change get it while it's ripe <laughs> Get it while it's ripe. Um, that's all I can say. It is the, well, I, I can't say it's the most profound. I mean, I was with Osho in India, enlightened master, and also my healing teacher. A lot the energies of this, the organs, the energies of the organs in this, very similar to my original healing teacher, Diraj, worked with the organs and the Kundalini. And when he died, I think part of that came through because I got holographic breathing not too long after that. And I think a lot of that came through in holographic breathing. And the movement in holographic breathing is the same as cranial sacral therapy. You can give yourself a cranial sacral therapy session with holographic breathing. You can, Diraj used to teach Tibetan pulsing. You can give yourself a Tibetan pulsing session, we were kind of doing those energies, the fire energies and the deep earth energies, he would call them the green energies. There are differences in the points and the energies a bit. Um, potent, transformative, mind-blowing, bringing you into the new age, evolving, these are all words I would say about holographic breathing. If you want to change, if you want to move forwards, you can do with this. You have to apply yourself. You actually have to do it. <laughs> no one can do it for you. So certain amount of application, but it will give you a potent breath work, healing, modality and a lot of it I've just given away free of charge so it's there but not to be understated that I give it away doesn't mean it's not powerful it is powerful if you get into this in a deep way your life will almost certainly change and hopefully for the better but I can't promise that <laughs> all right so um, we're done. I'm going to turn your microphones on. 